I had a sermon that I was going to preach when I left the house. But in the car, God changed my sermon. <laughs> so I got two things going through my mind. First of all, this is out of my comfort zone. Second of all, this is his church and not mine. So he can say what he wants to say. <laughs> it was a really good sermon, too. <laughs> I know. Who was it that said they all are? Come on. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, somebody needs to hear this tonight. You know, one of the most dangerous things we can do as Christians is to worry. We worry about way too much. We worry about way too much. I want to read a passage and I want to get to another passage. Just Matthew records Jesus talking about worry. And I kind of look at this a little differently. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink. Do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink. Nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food? And is the body not more than clothing? You know, when we worry, we worry about the most medial little things. That verse right there has got me. Is life not more than food or clothing? In other words, you're worrying about food or clothing. Not only will I take care of that, I will take care of everything. You're worrying about food and clothing. Yes, that, that'll be taken care of. But I got this. You are worried about the most petty, silly things. I have got this, says the Lord. Worry is dangerous. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap. This is an extremely familiar passage. I've preached out of it a bunch. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? It's not going to accomplish anything positive. He's saying, I've got this. You're worrying about little things, just one small piece of the pie. I hold the pie in my hand. He said, furthermore, you're causing yourself damage. And why are you worrying about clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, don't worry. Say that with me. Don't worry. Get it down in your getter. Don't worry. Don't worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Gentiles seek after these things, but your heavenly Father knows that you have need of them all. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry for itself. I like that.
that. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Boy, that's the truth. Here's what I want to share with you. Not only does God take care of the littlest things, not that food is a little thing. That's quite a big thing to me. <laughs> I know. Don't, don't, don't look at my stomach. What? It's awful cruel. Clothing, that is important. But in the grand scheme of things, that's one small piece. He says, I've got it all. If we were worrying about those little things, what about the real big things in life that we really spend all of our time worrying about? Let me tell you the, the thing that the Lord shared with me in the car that I feel like I'm supposed to share. All of this stuff about worry. But one of the most dangerous things of worry is worry is the seedbed of fear. You plant worry in the ground and what comes up is fear. If you plant worry, you will reap fear. Well, so, I'll tell you why. Because that's not from God. A spirit of fear is not from God. Fear doesn't just come upon you. You know where it starts? It starts in worry. And then we plan it. We worry about little things. We worry about... And then all of a sudden, that worry grows exponentially into a fear. And it sets down in on the inside of us. Second Timothy chapter 1 says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is on the inside of you. Through the laying on of hands. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Say that with me. God did not give us a spirit of fear. But what? Power, love, a sound mind. Power, love, sound mind. I'll talk about the garden of worry for a minute. How many people have worried this very day? How many people have worried about something today that you worried about yesterday? How many people would be bold enough to say, I've worried so much, I've become fearful about this thing? That's dangerous. When we are aware that we're afraid. And we're aware that we have put that fear upon ourselves and welcomed in the spirit of fear. And it starts with planting worry in the garden of life. And it sprouts as fear. I've shared with this church many different times, different fears I've had in my life. Not a one of them was placed there from God. I'm not just talking about being afraid of Whatever. There's so many phobias out there, it's kind of crazy. What is it deep on the inside of you that really has set in as a spirit of fear? Fear's not of God, that's right. See, some would say this, and I do believe this. Don't speak your fears, I believe that. But on the other hand, we need to know what our enemy is that we're fighting against. There's a lot of times an enemy has set down on the inside of you and you don't even realize what you're fighting against. And at that moment, you need to speak against it. Not welcome it in, but rebuke it. Now we're going to get down home and real here for a moment. How many people know that you're loved in this church? Who would be the first to say, I've got a fear that I want to be delivered from? Because God wants to set some people free from fear. Who would be bold enough to name it?
fear of failure. It's not from God. It is not from God. And in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of fear that has held her bound, Lord. A fear of failure, Lord. A fear of being looked down upon because she's not good enough, because she's made mistakes, because she has failed, because she has fallen. That is not given to her from you, Lord. But you have given her power to overcome this in the name of Jesus. You have filled her with love. And right now we pray for a sound mind and spirit of fear of failure, we command you to go in the name of Jesus. Your time of reign has ceased in this mind and in this spirit in the name of Jesus. And we command you to be loosed out of this life in Jesus' name. Who else? Fear of rejection. Come here, patience. We're going to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, mm, you have created this daughter, Lord. Lord, before she was in the womb, you knew her. And not only did you know her, you accepted her. In the name of Jesus, this spirit of fear that has come against her of rejection. We bind your power over her in the name of Jesus. We speak to you and against you in the name of Jesus. That is not from the Lord and your time has ended in this life in the name of Jesus. I pray for a season of fulfillment in Jesus' name. A season of happiness in Jesus' name. A season of acceptance of accepting the acceptance from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we bind your power over her life. We speak against you in Jesus' name and we command you to leave. She's been given power to overcome this. She's been filled with the love of God and she's been given a sound mind from this day forward. Every single day that she lives, Lord, she will no longer be walking, wondering what people are thinking, Lord, scared of being rejected of everyone else around her, Lord. But she will be confident in the person that you've created her to be. She will step forth in power, Lord, with the giftings of God that's placed on the inside of her. She will be bold and be obedient, Lord, and she will find her rest and her solace, Lord, in obedience to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is this okay tonight? Who else? Yes. Your wife? All right, come here, brother. Brother Wayne, would you stand here with me? Brother Mike, would you put your hand on him and pray with me here? Father, we come against this thing in Jesus' name. Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear. Lord, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, Lord. And tonight I pray for freedom in the name of Jesus for Lily May, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we declare freedom in her life in Jesus' name. Freedom from fear in the name of Jesus. Freedom from human inclinations to worry. Lord, give her the ability to place things in your hands, Father, and to expect the best from you, Lord, and to not be looking for the disappointments, Lord, but to be waiting expectantly for the promises of God to be fulfilled in her life in the name of Jesus. You foul demonic spirit that has come against her, we bind your power in Jesus' name. And we stand against you, we recognize you, we speak to you, and we command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And I thank you for doing it, Lord, and we declare freedom in her life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You, Praise God.
Who else? God's not finished here tonight. Who else? You know what it is. Come on, I've agonized over this now. <laughs> Fear of abandonment. Joy has been robbed for long enough. Lord, I pray that the Spirit of God would just come into her tonight, Lord, and fill her with the joy of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Overwhelm this Spirit with the joy of the Lord tonight, in Jesus' name I pray. We stand against you, you foul demonic spirit that has plagued her mind, Lord, in Jesus' name, that has even altered the way that she's lived her life, Lord. You have robbed her of her joy for long enough. And tonight we stand against you and we command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Your time is finished. She's not been given that, but she's been given power of the Spirit. She's been filled with the love of God and she's been given a sound mind. And I pray against worry and fear of abandonment in Jesus' name. We name you and we speak to you to leave in Jesus' name. We thank you for freedom, Lord. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that an inner healing is even going to begin, Lord, in Jesus' name. There is a root that is coming up even now. Mm. This isn't a surface issue, but there's a root that the Lord is wanting to pull up. In the name of Jesus, we pull it up tonight, God. Lord, put your finger on that root issue tonight, Lord, and root it out, God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for freedom and deliverance tonight, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. You are faithful, God. You are faithful, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are faithful, Lord. Mm. Lord, you are the one that sticks closer than a brother, Lord. Lord, your word says that you'll never leave us or forsake us, God. Oh, you'll never leave us, Jesus. You'll never forsake us, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. You'll never leave us, Lord. You'll never forsake us, God. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Praise your name, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Whew. Who else? Anybody else? Mm. Stand up, Janet. Mm. You've been lied to and you've been deceived by the enemy through a long season of warfare. He has made you to believe that this is what life is going to be like. He's removed hope and there's been despair that has set in. Mm. Lord, return the hope, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we cry out for breakthrough tonight in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough tonight, Lord. Lord, she's even questioned your goodness, Lord. She's even questioned your goodness. And it, if you have seen, Lord, and there's a fear of what lies ahead because the attacks have been so strong and going on for so long, Lord. She fears what's ahead, Lord. 
But Lord, I pray that you return the hope and the expectancy in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you are the one that renews hope, Lord. You are the one that renews hope, God, in the name of Jesus. Let it renew, Father. We bind you, evil spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus. Oh, your time is finished here. Oh. Your attacks might not be finished, but the outlook is finished. Mm. Oh, we will hold on to the word of the Lord and not the spirit of fear. We will declare the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, the sound mind, Lord, return in the name of Jesus. Return a love, Lord. Let her overflow with the love of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. And fill her once again with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -mm.
Mm-mm-mm. Praise the Lord. Whew. Who else? starts with worry so you wake up in the morning and you start worrying about something and it could be the simplest thing and then the next time you get up there and you worry about it and then you don't even have to get up there the next time you, you wake up the next morning and you start worrying about it before long it just sets in and it's a fear it's a spirit of fear that's set in on the inside of you and you don't even know that it's got hold of you. And it all happened from us planting worry over and over and over again. And it's starting to sprout. But God has not given you that. How do we fight it now? Paul told Timothy four things. Four things. Your greatest offense against the spirit of fear in your life. First thing is real simple. And this, Janet, you just lived this out right here. Fanning to flame the gift of the Spirit on the inside of you. One thing that the spirit of fear will suck from you is your God-given giftings and passions and purposes. If you are so captivated by fear, you will stay in your seat more than you will step out and obey because you're living in fear. Paul says to Timothy, what you've got to do, son, there's something on the inside of you. You've got to step out and you've got to fan it into a flame. Fan it into a flame. Fan it into a flame. Nothing will set you free from a spirit of fear more than overcoming it by stepping out into obedience to what God has in your life. They, I, I know in our church we, we have a... Well, it's an inter interesting church. It's a great church. Several people operate in giftings. Well, I'm bold enough to believe that there's a whole church full of people that are wanting to step out, but a fear has set in it. I, I, we're going to let somebody else do that. We're going we're gonna to let somebody else minister like, I, I'm just happy right here. 
Let me tell you something. If you'll take that first step, and you'll just be obedient to fan into flame the giftings that He's placed on the inside of you. There'll be a fulfillment come in your life. The spirit of fear will rob you from the giftings of God on the inside of you. I remember the first time. Now, th this hasn't happened very much, but God's used me in this gift of the Spirit a couple of times. I was standing right here. Except we had those beautiful orange pews back then. Somebody gave a message in tongues, and I'm sitting here, and I felt the Holy Spirit speak something in my spirit just like that. Well, what did I do? I got scared, and I kept my mouth shut. Don't look at me with those judgmental eyes. You've done the same thing. You know you have. And you know what? Brother Parrish stepped up there, and he gave the exact same word that the Holy Spirit had spoken to me. Isn't that something? Guess what? Next time somebody gave a message in tongues, the Holy Spirit spoke to me again, and I'm sitting here in fear. I'm like, I'm just a dumb kid. I don't even I've known. Just sitting here, knees knocking, sound like a cricket. The Lord says, and I stepped out and I shared what I felt like the Lord had laid on my heart. I overcame that spirit of fear by fanning to flame the passions and the giftings that God had placed on the inside. Such a freedom. First thing you can do to fight a spirit of fear is fanning into flame the gift of God on the inside of you. The second thing you can do to fight it, he says you've not been given a spirit of fear, you're going to fan into flame. The second thing you're going to do is you've got power to overcome that. See, the good thing is not only do you not have a spirit of fear, you do have something. It'd be great if it was just you don't have a spirit of fear. I'm not giving that to you, but he gave us something better instead. You're not excited enough about this. You've not been given a spirit of fear, Pete. Phil, that's not been given to you. But let me tell you what has been given to you. Power. Power has been given to you. Power. Power what? Power of the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. Man, and when that starts bubbling out, it's not even a contest. If we will step out in the power of the Holy Spirit instead of sitting in the fear of whatever, man, you'll experience a freedom. His power can overcome the fear of the enemy. Fanning into flame, power. What's the second, the third thing? Love. I have found more and more and more, not that I didn't before, but a deeper appreciation of the love of God. Whew. Man, Dale, there is nothing like the love of God. Whew. It overcomes any fear that would ever be in your life. The love of God. Wow, thank you, Jesus. We are so loved. If we could ever grasp the love that God Almighty has for us, we would never have to be afraid of anything. Did you know that? A lot of times fear comes from a not being able to appreciate and grasp the love of God in your life. He is your father, and he loves you so much. And the hurt that you've experienced and the worrying that you've experienced that's caused fear, replace that with the love of God on the inside of you. It's so much greater. And what's the next thing? You've been given a sound mind. Let me tell you, that is something that fear will rob from you. You ever notice you can worry and fear yourself into just weird places in your mind? Where you're not even thinking straight anymore. Has anybody ever gotten into that kind of worry, that kind of fear? Where your mind is just thinking dumb things and you can't even think straight. You know the right things, but your mind won't even let you go there anymore. <laughs> Old age. <laughs> 
don't say that. No. <laughs> That's funny. You've been given a sound mind from Almighty God. Amen. Fan into flame the passion and the gift of God on the inside of you. Amen. Step out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Get a healthy understanding and grasp of the love that God has for you. And operate in the sound mind that He's given you. And don't give fear one inch to take that from you. Those four things are your greatest offense against the spirit of fear. You've not been given to it. Although we plan it in our own life. And it's usually done by word. Father, tonight was different but awesome. Lord, this is your church, and this is apparently the word that you wanted for this body tonight, Lord. Lord, we've all been guilty of worry, but really the greater danger in worry is what it leads to, Lord. And I think a lot of times we've operated and welcomed in a spirit of fear from our own worry. And the truth is, you've not given that to us, Lord, but you've given us the power of the Holy Spirit. You filled us with the love of God. You've placed a sound mind on the inside of us that we can step out and fan into a flame the gift that you've placed on the inside of us, Lord. Lord, and that's what I want over this body. Lord, those that responded tonight, may they live in a new freedom. Those that were afraid to respond, Lord, set them free tonight in the name of Jesus. You are faithful, God. And you are the one that will set us free. We expose these things tonight and we cast them out, Lord. We're tired of giving in to the spirit of fear. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm finished. We're going to worship. You can come down front and pray. You can pray for each other. You can love each other. You can bind, rebuke, cast out. Sounds good to me. I'm finished.